All right, welcome back. All right, so we talked a while back ago when we were looking at transcription, we talked about how it's not as simple as just, you know, the DNA binding to RNA polymerase and it just goes off to the races, we get an RNA. No. We have a lot of proteins that have to come in. They're called uh, transcription factors. In prokaryotes, they're called sigma factors, and you have to do a lot of stuff like that just to get the RNA polymerase on there, on the DNA, so you can get transcription. Translation with the ribosome is actually not so different. Okay, There's a lot more to this than just simply um, the ribosome binds to the mRNA, tRNAs come in, and you're off to the races. It's not like that at all. It's very similar in, in effect to transcription. So in this video, before we actually talk about translation and the ribosome's function, we actually have to talk about its initiation. and It's fairly complicated. We'll try to simplify it as much as possible. All right. So for protein synthesis, what we have is we have something referred to as an initiator codon or init initiation codon. So when we have the ribosome, we're going to go ahead and assume that um, the mRNA is already in there. Okay. Now there's a lot of a lot more things that go on other proteins that have to bind to set up the ribosome to get it assembled. But assuming the mRNA is already there, we have what's called an initiator codon. For the most part, the initiator codon has pretty much a consensus sequence. It's AUG. Okay, AUG codes for either methionine or formal methionine. So formal methionine is just a, a modified methionine, basically. Okay, but it's either formal methionine or methionine, and it's generally AUG codon. Okay, now if you go upstream, meaning to the left towards the five prime end from the initiator codon, you'll have what's referred to as something called a Shine Delgarno sequence. All right, this is a sequence in the mRNA that has some complementarity and ability to bind to and interact with the ribosomal RNA. Now, I didn't go into this in a lot of detail in the previous video, but we're going to talk about it a lot with ribosomes. Ribosomes are, most people think of them as enzymes, and they are. They're large enzyme complexes. However, unlike most enzymes, like RNA polymerase or anything you talked about in metabolic pathways, ribosomes do not do their catalysis with protein. Okay. Ribosomes, their catalytically active part is ribosomal RNA. So in a sense, ribosomes are just very large ribozymes, meaning they're, they're enzymes that do catalysis with RNA. And so ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, is going to be the catalytic part of the ribosome. And then there's also a large amount of rRNA that's structural. In fact, they've done crystallographic structures of ribosomes and shown that there's actually no protein or amino acids anywhere near the active site of the ribosome. It's all done with ribosomal RNA, which I find impressive. Now, for the mRNA that's in the ribosome, it has a sequence called the Schein-Delgarno sequence that actually can pair with the 16S ribosomal RNA. All right, we have another video that explains what the S is, but that basically has to do with the size of the rRNA. Okay, but these red parts right here have a, have capacity to pair with that rRNA and stabilize it, and this is basically the three prime end of the 16s rRNA in prokaryotes, and you can see it hydrogen bonds with and interacts with the mRNA, the Shine Delgarno sequence. That's for stabilization purposes. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty typical Shine Delgarno sequence in prokaryotes. Eukaryotes have a different one that's called the Kozak sequence. So Shine Delgarno is for prokaryotes, Kozak is for eukaryotes. But they basically do the same thing. They interact with ribosomal RNA and they're upstream from the initiator codon. Okay. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now what we're going to do in this video is talk about prokaryotic ribosome assembly. Prokaryotes, bacteria and so forth, have what's called a 70S ribosome. Now, when you see a 70S ribosome, that should immediately strike you as we're talking about prokaryotes. If you see 80S ribosome, that should say we're talking about eukaryotes. So you can look at the, the number in front of the S and tell which ribosome it is. So this is 70S. Now you notice that the large subunit of the ribosome is 50S, the small subunit is 30S. And you add those together and you don't get 70. That's actually normal. The S does not have to do with the mass necessarily. It has to do with uh, its acceleration through a medium, if, so to speak. And so it's not just as simple as adding two numbers to get the total number. Um, it turns out that what, you don't actually add these to get them. 
But when you, when you put the, these two subunits, the large and the small, together, you get a 70S ribosome. This is the cleft right here where the active site is. Okay, And it turns out that the active site, as I mentioned before, is only ribosomal RNA. So all the catalysis of the ribosome is done with ribosomal RNA, and there's no protein anywhere close to the active site. Okay, Now let's talk about how the prokaryotic ribosome 70S assembles. We start off with the 30S subunit. We have, by the way, just like in the case of eukaryotes, an A site, a P site, and an E site. Okay. Now, initially, you have two what are called initiation factors, IF, that bind. The IF1 binds in the A site, and the IF3 binds in the E site. Okay. And then the mRNA comes into the uh, small subunit of the ribosome near the A, P, and E sites. All right. Now, initially what's going to happen is you'll notice here in the small subunit we have that 16S ribosomal RNA. You can see that it lines up pretty well with the shine delgarno sequence. Okay? So that's why we have that. Also notice the AUG, the initiator codon, is set up right under the P site of the small subunit. That's very important also. All right. Now, for step two, we have this protein called IF2GTP. All right. What IF2GTP does is it binds to the 30S subunit and it brings along with it the first transfer RNA. This transfer RNA is the tRNA that brings formal methionine. So you would name that tRNA FMET tRNA. Okay. You'll notice initially that the first tRNA that comes into any ribosome when it's being assembled, the very first tRNA comes into the P site. Okay? You'll see that the codon, the initiator codon, is AUG, which is complementary to the anticodon, UAC, in the P site. All right? Also notice that the IF2 GTP complex is sandwiched next to the IF1. Okay? One thing I want to point out that's very important, very different from elongation, is, and this goes for both prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes, in all cases when you're setting up the ribosome, the first tRNA is always in the P site. This is very confusing for people, always in the P site. After you actually get translation going, every other tRNA comes into the A site, which is the one to the right of the P site here. They'll all come into the A site. It's just the first one has to be in the P site. Now, the next step is the 50S, the large subunit, kind of closes on top of everything. That GTP gets hydrolyzed by IF2, and all initiation factors IF1, 2, and 3 dissociate. And that's your initiator complex, or initiation complex. Now, this yellow codon right here is just the codon that's going to be complementary to the next tRNA that comes into the A site. So yeah, we do have this initial tRNA, the formal methionine, or in eukaryotes, methionine, in the P site, but every other one's going to come into the A site. And this is now done with initiation, and you can basically start uh, translation. All right, we're going to talk about um, eukaryotic ribosome assembly in the next video, and after that, we're going to go into um, how you do elongation. How does the ribosome move along the mRNA? Okay, and so on and so forth. All right, join us in that video, and this concludes this video on prokaryotic 70S ribosome assembly. Thank you.